Hey, this is Derek. We're in this um, villa in Bali, so I'm gonna give you a little tour of what it looks like. Um, today we're working on a couple of things. The Alliance of Independent Authors has a self-publishing conference right now, so we actually recorded um, a video of the traveling lifestyle. So like why I travel and write, how I travel and write and get stuff done. Um, so I thought this would be a fun opportunity to show you one of the places that we live in. This is extravagant. We don't live in places like this all the time. Um, and it isn't necessarily productive to travel full time and do the writing, but I do it because living in places like this keeps me um, motivated and inspired. This is kind of the life that I would like to be living. So um, to be able to travel full time as a writer, it's great because you can work online and write your books. Um, I also need to be productive and keep producing books so that we can, you know, afford to travel. This, the the traveling lifestyle, it's not actually more expensive than like if we were living in Oregon, where I'm from. Um, we're not spending more money to travel full time, but there is a lot of. We need to be more flexible. Um, there's more freedom, but there's also a lot of limitation. It, it could be nice to have like your own um, full time office or desk or or like a daily schedule where you get a lot of work done. Um, however, this place is pretty incredible, so I'm going to show you around. Um, I'll also link later to that interview on the um, self-publishing um, self-publishing conference that's going on right now. Um, and I'll talk about the project that I'm working on here, which is a, a 19th century book on solitude. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that later when I'm, when I'm going around. But this is kind of the desk area, which is fantastic. Um, there's actually a little too much light up here. So I'm not really using this desk. You'll see this is kind of the top of this three floor house, which is this epic um, desk area. So although I love it, it's not really great in the daytime. It's better um, during the nighttime. Here's a view of, of what downstairs looks like. We're here with um, some other digital nomads and writers working on some books and projects. It's completely open, 100%. Um, I think 90% of the materials are bamboo. So this is a eco-friendly, sustainable, um, project called the Green Village in, in Bali. And so here's the stairs going down. This is our front door, um, which is actually a big glass panel, like a big round glass panel. So you can see it kind of opens <laughs> like that. It's crazy. Um, this is the bathroom. Just a little kind of pod. Luckily there's nobody in there right now. Um, this is the first floor. So this is the main floor and this is also kind of like if you look outside, this is the ground floor here. Um, from outside, it's it doesn't look as impressive as it did inside, but once you're inside, um, it really opens up and you can see that um, it's actually really tall. <laughs> like that's that's our view down. So I'll show you all the different layers. This is a little TV room over here. Last night we were um, all kind of cuddled in here on the couch talking business and marketing funnels and stuff like that which is pretty nice i like hanging out with digital nomads because um they're they're writers they're creative but they also know a lot about business and marketing um this is the view this is the sunrise villa because it faces east so we have a really nice sunset in the morning that's another one of the houses over there this is bali bali the, the weather has been great um i'm actually we've been to a lot of countries in the last three years um traveling full time Bali is really one of my favorite places, so I'm really excited to stay here longer or maybe come back. I know that the 20 Books to 50K conference, um, they're doing a special event in Bali next January, so we'll probably come to that. Working space. We have a really nice um, kitchen, actually. It's fully prepared. They also stocked it. This is, um, they have, uh, we get breakfast and they keep our fridge stocked, so we have lots of drinks and snacks. Okay, let's go downstairs. Um, so this book on project I'm working on is about solitude. Um, it's William Alger. I discovered it when I was working on my PhD thesis and I love it because I like 19th century writing. I heard somebody say on Facebook like um, the writing is constipated, which means they, they're trying too hard to communicate simple um, topics. I'm gonna put my head in here. There's the, the bathroom, it just has a curtain. Um, this really awesome love seat just over there. So William Alger, like he, the writing is beautiful. It's difficult. It's challenging. Um, so I kind of hate it because it's so hard. It's, it's been so slow to edit it. 
um, but it's also really rewarding because uh, he talks, it's basically a treatise on solitude, so he puts together a lot of research about a lot of famous people that's not actually publicly available because he's not a very famous writer, so nobody's really, this book um, wasn't even available in ebook, it's really hard for me to track down a copy, so when I publish it, it'll be like the first available copy for a lot of people. Um, it's difficult, so I don't expect a lot of people to really read it all the way through, although I think the topic is really important because um, the idea is that creative people or creative geniuses or people who are working on their own projects, um, they feel isolated a lot because they can't find other people who really get what they're talking about or maybe they're not really good with um, social, being social or making friends or anything like that. This is our bedroom down here. That's the big um, curtain and Lana might be taking a nap in there so I won't open that. That's the, um, the pool area. We can go down there. Um, so anyway, this book on solitude, I want to finish editing it because I think it's really neat um, and also because I'm kind of mining it for quotes to use in other books. I'm working on a couple projects about um, creativity in general or being productive or avoiding anxiety or fear of procrastination. Those are challenges for creative people. Um, I'm really excited about the projects I'm working on. There'll be a balance of historical quotes from famous artists and authors um, that aren't just quotes that you find like on Goodreads or something or online. Um, these are, this is information about famous people that that really isn't available yet. So I'm excited to be reading it and discovering it um, and then kind of repackaging it to share it with other people. Um, but the idea of solitude is so interesting because some of the things that I notice when he's talking about these famous people and their challenges um, is that they all they all want to, like they have a longing to belong um, or to have a community. They want friends. They don't like being alone or to be lonely. So they feel this, like they want to be with people, but they just can't do it because nobody gets their projects. Um, I'm going to turn it back to me. So the thing with solitude, it's like they want community. They want connection. Humans need that to thrive. Um, and I actually think one of the biggest productivity hacks or motivating factors um, can be community. I'm also this week, I'm doing a, a productivity challenge with a guy named Sebastian Marshall um, who has some really um, great systems built to help people get the work done. So we have to like log in and do our, our sprints or our writing or our, our most um, critical work because a lot of times life gets in the way and we focus on putting out fires um, rather than the big meaningful stuff. Um, so the idea is to focus a certain amount of time every day on the big meaningful stuff that actually matters, um, which is what I try to do, but I'm not very good with managing my time. But also there's a community aspect where we're all on teams and we're all kind of competing to make sure that we hit our goals um, together. Because if we don't hit our personal goals, then we're kind of letting our team down. Um, I think that's really motivating. I also think it's really motivating to be in a place like this. You can kind of see up behind me. Um, and this is what I, why I do stuff like this, just because, I mean, having the location like this is really inspiring and a beautiful place to do the work out of um, is great personally, but then also surrounding myself with other people, just being in the same room in a beautiful place with other people who are working on their projects or their goals, I find really motivating. I would like to be doing a lot um, more of that. And kind of the sad thing in this book of solitude is that a lot of, like a couple hundred years ago, a lot of creative people didn't have funding for their projects. They didn't have a, a full-time job. Um, so they wanted to do their greatest work, but they couldn't because they couldn't find a patron. Like they wanted somebody else to support them and do patronage, which means somebody else would invite them to their, to their villa or their mansion or whatever, and they could live for free and they could eat for free and they could just concentrate on doing their best work. That's kind of what geniuses or artists, I mean, Da Vinci, a lot of famous people, that's, that's how they did their work, was that they had a sponsor or a patron who fed them and clothed them and gave them a place to live, probably gave them a stipend also, and just let them do their work. Um, that model doesn't really exist anymore, although there are some cool online stuff like Patreon, for example, um, which I don't necessarily recommend because I don't think asking people for money to support your creative dream is something that works anymore. It worked a couple hundred years ago because there were fewer creative people and those creative people were the brightest minds of, of humanity. Now everybody is, is painting or writing a book, everybody. So we can't all be supported 
um, by rich people, we have to find ways of building our own platform and providing value um, and making work that matters so that it's easier to sell. But once you've built a big platform, um, I think there are ways to fund your lifestyle so that you can work on your most important work. And that's kind of what I've been trying to do. When I started Creativity a few years ago, um, I had a six step pro process to creative independence. Um, and I'm kind of on step five, so I'm getting there, but I'm still not there yet. Um, I'm still learning a lot of the business and the sales and the marketing stuff. Um, and I'm getting better about doing work that matters. I've still been doing a lot of projects that like I thought were really cool. They really were important to me. I think they're fun or clever or whatever but they don't matter to other people. So um, if I want to make more money with less work, I need to have products that satisfy or entertain um, or, or matter, are valuable to more people. And I, I need to focus on doing that deliberately and also building my platform um, and also getting more visibility and learning the sales. There's a lot of pieces to it. It's difficult if you're just starting out, um, if you're a writer or an artist, it takes time to build a platform and to figure out how to do work that matters. Um, I think my books will help. Like I said, I'm working on a couple guides to creativity, which are about creating the work and selling the work, basically, um, which I'm excited to be working on because those are the things that I think are really important, but I've never really had time to work on before because I was running my business. So I'm at the point now with my, with my businesses where I have a lot of free time to work on the creative stuff that I'm passionate about, that I'm excited about. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on. I hope you enjoyed this tour. Um, go check out, I'll give a link to the interview that I did um, on writing and traveling full time and kind of that digital nomad lifestyle, which I don't often talk about um, with my platform. I share like videos, but my, my wife and I are really not travel bloggers, so this isn't really something we, we share. Um, but we do, like a couple times a year we rent a place like this or a castle um, and usually invite people to stay for free. Later I'm probably going to put it in my emails as, an, as a long term giveaway where you can sign up to win a free stay um, because what I would really love to bring back is that patronage model where I have an amazing inspiring place and I let creative people apply for a residency like a writing residency I would like to be doing that kind of thing rather than like a writing retreat although I love doing those also um, I'd love to build a full-time community that helps creative people or writers um, do their best work, support them by doing their best work, um, not only with the space and the freedom and the time, but also with coaching and marketing help and, and stuff like that to help them bridge the gap between um, finishing the work and getting it out to the right people. Anyway, so I hope you like this video. If so, share it, um, subscribe, follow me or whatever. Leave a comment um, about what you think of this place. Um, let me know if you'd like to come and stay here sometime. Thanks. Bye-bye.